Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, as we continue here in trying to understand convolution, we're going to use an RC circuit and master the details of what's going on before we even consider what convolution is. So in this section, we're just going to play around with an RC circuit, taking the next step from what we did earlier when we talked about charging and discharging the RC circuit. And here I have simply bent the wire down so the resistor is up here and the capacitor is vertical. So I can think of this as an input on the left and an output on the right, kind of the way you would read a book from left to right. This is actually a low pass filter. If you have an input signal that's oscillating very, very rapidly, pushing charge forward and backwards, but rapidly, the capacitor doesn't really get a chance to charge up. And over here on the output, you're not going to really pick that up. But if you take your time and have a low frequency where you give the time for this capacitor to charge up, sufficient enough time then you see some action over here so you see action for bass for low frequencies but the high pitch the high frequencies get filtered out so we say this is a low pass filter it passes low frequencies well convolution being as it is somewhat difficult to understand I would like to simplify by picking all my parameters to be equal to 1. So the math is very, very, very simple. I'm going to pick 1 ohm for the resistor, 1 farad for the capacitor. I'm going to apply a voltage here of 1 volt for a period of 1 second. Now we know what's going to happen when we apply this voltage from our previous section. We know that we're going to start charging up. And then when we release that voltage take that battery away so to speak we get a discharge and it's possible here that that capacitor never fully charges depends how long that time is so we're not sure of what's going to happen so we're going to allow for the more general case so let's look at our formulas from the previous section with all the parameters being equal to one here's our charging equation from before and if we let C equal 1 farad, V naught equal 1 volt, and a T here is our variable for the charging. So that's going to be the equation we're going to use for time T equal to 0 up until T equal to 1 second. So notice with all the 1's you get this nice result, 1 minus E to the minus T. Then at 1 second, we start our discharge, so we need to apply this equation for the discharge, but this will kick in, see here, this kind of an exponential when t is equal to 1. So we're going to have to uh, shift this exponential in a second. I'll show you how to do that as we get to some pictures here first. So here we have the pulse voltage coming in, some function f of t one volt for one second. So our charging equation is this one here, one minus e to the minus t, we're charging up. And here I allow for the possibility of not being fully charged up. So this was our c times v naught from before. And that equation there, here, the C V naught, since the C is one farad and the V naught is one volt, it's simply a one. And I might not get there because the time may not be long enough. So I have this equation. Now this is important that we have to match this at this boundary. The equation for the right hand side, the function must uh, match at this point. So here's the way I reason this out. At this point I have the charge where t equals 1, so I have 1 minus e to the minus 1 amount of charge there. And then I apply my discharge to that as my initial, that's like my initial 
charge for the discharge, but since the time is shifted, I need to use this exponential decay shifted. Now we know how to shift a function one second to the right or one unit to the right. You use the old shift trick. So the t becomes t minus 1 and that shifts this exponential decay to kick in at the right. Now you, you gotta be careful here when the time t is between 0 and 1 you can't use this. This is not the solution. You use this one here and when t is greater than 1 then you use this one. If t should equal 1 well then you could use either one because see this would give you 1 minus e to the minus 1 at that point and when t equals 1 you would get e to the 0th power which is 1 so they match at the boundary. So think about this equation here that fits this pulse hitting this low pass filter because you can understand everything about this and the convolution is staring you right in the face which we're going to be seeing in our next section coming up and the following sections as we complete this chapter. So think about this neat thing here. We hit this RC circuit with a pulse voltage so we have a charging phase during the uh, hitting it with that one second and then when the voltage drops to zero whatever you have there in charge has that discharge equation kicking in.